Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. Let's start the next reaction. That is third reaction. Aldol condensation. Let's see the statement. Carbonyl compounds having alpha hydrogen atoms undergo self condensation in presence of strong base. In this particular condensation, the reactants are carbonyl compounds. These must be having alpha hydrogen atoms. Let us see the simple representation of aldol condensation. That is, carbonyl compounds. It must be containing what? Alpha hydrogens treated with a strong base. It can produces the products beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds. These beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds further subjected to heating. What will happen? The elimination of H2O takes place to produce alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. It means that what? By using this particular aldol condensation, we can easily synthesize alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. The starting materials are carbonyl compounds. It must be having alpha hydrogen atoms, initially producing beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds. The beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds are commonly called as aldols. The formed aldols are subjected to heating. It can produce as alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. Let us see the general equation for this particular aldol condensation. Acetaldehyde. This is going to treated with base that is NuOH. In this particular aldol condensation, the number of moles are very important. Here, two moles of aldehyde molecules are involving in the condensation reaction. Why? Because the carbonyl compounds must be undergo self condensation. It means that what more than one molecule of reactant must be present. 2 moles of acetaldehyde involving in this reaction, it is going to produce this type of compound CHOH, single bond CH2, C double bond OH. This is beta hydroxy aldehyde. We know that the reactant is what? Aldehyde. That's why the product will be aldehyde only. The formed product is subjected to heating, the elimination of water molecule takes place. With respect to this carbonyl group, this is alpha position and this one is beta position. 
फ्रॉम द आल्फा पोर्शन हाइड्रोजन फ्रॉम द बीटा पोर्शन हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप बोथ विल बी रिमूव इन दम ऑफ वाटर मॉलिक्यूल इट कैन प्रोड्यूस इज सी एच थ्री सी एच डबल बॉन्ड सी एच सिंगल बॉन्ड सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ एच दिस इज आल्फा बीटा अनसाचुरेटेड आल्डिहाइड The third component in this particular format is mechanism. Mechanism is very very important. Let's see the mechanism. The first reactant is acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is initially treated with strong base. We all know that. the base is used for the removal of acetic hydrogens if you see this particular aldehyde this carbon is acidic in nature that's why we can easily remove proton from this particular carbon it can produces ch2 minus c double bond oh already we know that the negative charge of the carbon atom involving in the delocalization with the aldehydic carbon it can produce CH2 double bond single bond CO minus H. In the first case, negative charge on the carbon. In the second case, negative charge on the oxygen atom. This is the carbene ion. This one is enolate ion. We know that enolate ions are more stable than comparing with the carbene ions. That's why we are observing the resonating forms. this one is going to treated with the second molecule of aldehyde in aldehydes what will happen we have this c double bond o group comparing with the carbon oxygen is more electronegative in nature always these bonding electrons move towards what oxygen or not that's why we will observe positive charge at the carbonyl carbon it readily takes electrons or not so this c minus will attack at the carbonyl carbon to produce ch3 co minus h ch2 c double bond oh in the first step what happens we have removed proton from this particular aldehyde or not the proton is available here this proton is going to approach the o minus to form ch3 coh hch hc double bond oh this is commonly called as what aldol also called as beta hydroxy aldehyde this one further subjected to heating to produce your alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde ch3 ch double bond ch c double bond oh this is the final product this one is very very simple reaction aldol condensation we all very familiar with the aldol condensation here in this particular lecture i am going to give the applications of aldol condensation applications are very very important let's see the application part in the general reaction we have seen that two acetaldehyde molecules are combined together to produce the corresponding beta hydroxy aldehyde followed by the elimination of water molecule produces alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde so okay let's see the combination of ketones in this particular condensation acetone is the simplest ketone if it is involving in the aldol condensation let's see the product this is beta hydroxy ketone if the beta hydroxy ketone is subjected to further heating the elimination of water molecule takes place it can form 
C double bond O C digit. This is alpha, beta unsaturated ketone. In the general equation, we have seen that two aldehydes involve in the condensation process. But in this particular example, two ketone moieties are involved. If you compare aldehyde and ketone, the reactivity of the aldehyde carbonyl group is higher than comparing with the ketone. Why? Because in case of the ketone, we are having two electron releasing groups. Because of the presence of these two electron releasing groups, the positive charge on the carbon atom will be reduced. That's why the addition of nucleophile from the external portion to this particular carbon is going to be difficult. That's why the formation of this beta hydroxy ketone is somewhat difficult than comparing with the formation of beta hydroxy aldehyde. Right? Next example. In this particular example, we have seen that two moles of ketone molecule involved in the particular reaction. But if you see this particular moiety, both keto groups are present in the same molecule. It means that what we can directly involve aldol condensation in this particular reactant also. For the involvement of aldol condensation, we need two carbonyl groups. Right? Both the carbonyl groups are present in the single molecule. That's why we can easily involve this particular molecule for the aldol condensation reaction. What will happen initially? If you see this CH3 and this CH3, both are methyl groups only. That's why we can easily remove the proton either from this carbon or this carbon. Let us assume if you remove the proton from this particular CH3, what will happen? Here we can produce CH2 minus. This CH2 minus can attack what? The second carbonyl group. Let's see the mechanism. C double bond O, it will become CH2 minus C double bond O CH3. This CH2 minus will attack on this what? Ketonic group. Oxygen will take minus charge. Here we have produced H plus ion. This H plus ion approaches to what? This O minus. It can form C double bond O, single bond OH, CH2. This is directly connected to CH3. If you remove water molecule, we will come up with a five membered ring. with CH3. This is what alpha beta unsaturated ketone but it is in the form of what? Cyclic ring. From this particular example we can confirm that aldol condensation is not only used for the synthesis of acyclic alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds it can also be used for the preparation of cyclic alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. This is one of the example. Let us see one more example in this particular case. This is one compound. This compound is also containing two keto groups. So, this compound can also be involved in aldol condensation. This is the alpha carbon with respect to, to this one. This is also alpha carbon. We can remove the proton from either this carbon or this carbon. But the formation of the enolate ion at this particular position is going to be stable than comparing with this particular 
say H3 group. That's why we can easily remove the proton from this position. We have added the base. The base is going to remove the proton. That's why here we are going to get what? Negative charge. The negative charge is going to approach this particular carbon. It can move towards oxygen. Oxygen will take the negative charge. Here we are removing the H plus ion. The H plus ion move towards oxygen. So simply the formation of a single bond between two carbons will take place. See this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The 5 membered ring is going to be generated. See double bond O. CH3 OH. This is the compound. Beta hydroxy carbonyl compound with respect to keto group. This is alpha position. This one is beta position. Now what happens? The elimination of water molecule takes place. We can get C double bond O CH2 C double bond C CH2 CH2 this is CH3. The name of this compound is cis jasmine. We all know that different kinds of perfumes are preparing nowadays but some of the perfumes uh, there we are using jasmine flower. So this is the major compound in case of the jasmine based perfumes. Okay. So these are the some of the applications of Arnold condensation. Let's move further. In the first example, we have taken two acetaldehyde molecules. In the second example, we have taken two ketone molecules. Suppose, if you combine both, what will happen? The next example is what? Combination of aldehyde and ketone in presence of base. According to aldol condensation, it is a self-condensation. Self-condensation means what? Combination of two acetaldehyde molecules can produce one product that is represented with one. The self-condensation of two acetone molecules produce another product that is represented with 2. The third product will be, if you remove the proton from this CH3, you will generate C minus ion here. The C minus ion may attack the aldehyde carbon. You will get another product that will be 3. Suppose, if we remove proton from this carbon, you will come up with CH2 minus. This CH2 minus will attack keto carbonyl. So, you will get one more product that is represented with 4. It means that what? The combination of two different carbonyl compounds, aldehyde and ketone, to produce different products. Mixture of products. That's why this type of condensation is commonly called as crossed aldol condensation or we can say that it is mixed aldol condensation. Crossed aldol condensation or mixed aldol condensation. This is one combination. We will have another combination also. Let us see. CH3C double bond OH. Plus CH3, CH2, C double bond OH. It means we can take two different aldehydes. The combination of two different aldehydes can also produce mixture of products. Otherwise, CH3, C double bond O, CH3, CH3, C double bond O, CH2, CH3. The combination of two different ketones, it can also produce mixture of products or not. One product with this compound, 
वन प्रोडक्ट विथ दिस कंपाउंड वन प्रोडक्ट बाय द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सी एच माइनस हियर वन प्रोडक्ट बाय द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सी एच टू माइनस हियर वन प्रोडक्ट विथ द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सी एच टू माइनस हियर इट मीन्स दैट वॉट वी आर गेटिंग ए मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट इन दर्टिकुलर कॉम्बिनेशन दैट्स वाई दीज काइंड ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन आर नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट we need not to bother about the mixture of products but you should aware that the combination of different kinds of aldehydes or the different kinds of ketones or the combination of aldehyde and ketone can give a aldol product here one particular thing is that it's very important suppose if i have one reactant in the form of cyclic compound another one is an aldehyde or ketone if these two species are combined with each other in presence of naoh it can also be involved in the what aldol condensation or not according to aldol condensation what happens two molecules of acetaldehydes can give one product two moles of this cyclic compound give one product if you generate ch2 minus here that can give another product if you generate ch minus here that can give another product there are four products that can be formed by the combination of these two reactants but the final product which we are exclusively observing in that case is double bond CH3H Among the formation of four possible products we are identifying only this product what is the reason let us see If you want to prepare this kind of product what should we do we need to generate a carbyl ion at this carbon So initially if you generate a carbene ion at this carbon what will happen the minus charge will be at this carbon then it can generate what single bond o minus double bond this is enolate ion or not suppose if you remove a proton from this carbon you will come up with ch2 minus c double bond oh this is also enolate ion comparing with this enolate ion the cyclic enolate ion is highly stable why because this is highly substituted the highly substituted type is highly stable in nature that's why the formation of this particular product is always major one this is very very important example in case of crossed all mixer aldol condensation reactions right now come to the next portion in this particular condensation till now we have seen that different combinations are available for the aldol condensation aldehyde aldehyde ketone ketone and aldehyde ketone so in all these combinations we have observed that what the carbonyl group must be having a alpha proton till now we have seen that the combination of two aldehydes two ketones are one aldehyde and one ketone in case of aldol condensation suppose if you take this kind of aldehyde and this kind of aldehyde aldehyde and ketone if you observe this particular situation these two reactants are having alpha ch protons but this particular aldehyde doesn't have any kind of alpha ch proton if you treat these type of reactants you will get the compounds those are the what alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds these alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds are commonly called as chalcones the phenomena was observed by kleisen and schmidt that's why this type of condensation is commonly called as kleisen schmidt condensation this is the extension of 
aldal condensation already we have seen the mechanism of aldal condensation one molecule involving in the removal of proton it means that what generation of carbene ion the second molecule involves in the addition portion here what happens initially we are going to generate carbene ion at this particular carbon you will get ch2 minus the ch2 minus will attack this carbon ion group you will come up with beta hydroxy compound the beta hydroxy compound is subjected to dehydration you will come up with alpha beta unsaturated carbon ion group right this is the what extension of your aldal condensation observed by claisen and schmidt that's why this condensation is commonly called as claisen schmidt condensation let us see the last portion of aldal condensation before going to discuss about the last portion here we need to see some terminology in stereochemistry topic we have something called as selectivity here we are having different kinds of selectivity the first one is regio selectivity the second one is stereo selectivity the third one is asymmetric synthesis these three are very very important so each and every learner must remember regio selectivity stereo selectivity and asymmetric synthesis regio selectivity means suppose if you have a chemical reaction a gives rise to b and c the b and c are structural isomers during the progress of this particular reaction assume that you have observed 70 percentage of b and 30 percentage of c product then such type of reactions are called as regio selective reactions how can we define any chemical reaction which is producing an equal ratio of structural isomers commonly called as regio selective reactions the second one is stereo selectivity or stereo selective reactions suppose if the produced products are stereo isomers then the reaction is commonly called as stereo selective reaction how can we define any chemical reaction which is producing an equal ratio of stereo isomers commonly called as stereo selective reactions the next type is what asymmetric synthesis this is very very important component nowadays in terms of the research whatever the stereo isomers which we are getting in this particular example if these stereo isomers are chiral in nature then that particular chemical reaction is commonly called as asymmetric synthesis so how can we define any chemical reaction which is producing an equal ratio of chiral stereo isomers are commonly called as asymmetric synthesis right i think you can remember the terminology regio selectivity stereo selectivity and asymmetric synthesis asymmetric synthesis means what any chemical reaction which is producing an equal ratio of chiral stereo isomers in case of the aldal condensation we have the terminology called as asymmetric aldal condensation whatever the things which we have discussed till now aldal condensation crossed aldal condensation mixed aldal condensation claisen schmidt condensation these are all preliminary in nature this one is the what advanced level topic asymmetric aldal condensation already we know that the definition of asymmetric synthesis 
According to asymmetric synthesis, we can synthesize chiral stereoisomers. Asymmetric aldol condensation means during the condensation reaction, we are getting beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds. The beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds must be having some chiral centers. Thereby, you will come up with chiral stereoisomers. Let us see one example for the understanding purpose. This portion is very very important for the competitive examinations. All kind of kinds of competitive examinations. The general reaction is RC double bond OH plus R dash CH2 C double bond O R double dash. Here we are taking a base LDA at minus 78 degree centigrade. Lithium diisopropyl amide. It is a strong base. Previously we have used strong base that is NaOH that is used for the removal of proton from the alpha carbon. The activity of LADA will be same. Here you will come up with R single bond COH H single bond CH R C double bond O R dash. See this one. This is one chiral center. This is another chiral center. Generation of chiral centers. This molecule containing what? Chiral centers. We know that according to stereochemistry, we have a terminology called as syn anti R. Erythro trio. These are the isomers, right? How can we represent this particular product in the form of syn isomers and in the form of anti isomers? Or in the form of erythro isomers or in the form of trio isomers? Let us see. OH R dash. If both the groups are above the plane, that is called as what? Sin R erythro. The both groups R dash. Both the groups below the plane, this is also what? That's why these two isomers are sin R erythro isomers. In case of trio, one is above the plane, second one is below the plane. The second type is one is below the plane, this is above the plane. It can also be represented R dash OH These two are trio isomers, these two are erythro isomers. It means that what? The formation of sin are anti isomers possible from this particular aldol condensation. The thing is that how can we identify? Which isomer is major in nature? Syn isomer or anti isomer? In terms of erythro or trio, erythro is major or trio is major. How can we identify? Let us see the mechanism. Mechanism is very very simple. It follows aldol condensation only. 
बट हेयर वी नीड टू रिमेम्बर वन पर्टिकुलर थिंग सो इनिशियली एल डी ए इज ए स्ट्रॉन्ग बेस द बेस रिमूव वॉट प्रोटॉन फ्रॉम द आल्फा पोजिशन हेयर इट इज द आल्फा पोजिशन इट कैन रिमूव ए प्रोटॉन सो इट कैन प्रोड्यूस वॉट आर डैश सी माइनस सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ आर डबल already we know that this o minus is in conjugation with what this particular carbonyl group so we can write r c double bond o o minus and r here is the point we need to remember if you see this one we all know that the nomenclature of e and z E Z nomenclature, nomenclature, we all are familiar. Suppose you have a moiety C double bond C, C O O H, C O O H, H. If you want to identify whether it is a E isomer or Z isomer, simply we can follow the rules. According to the rules, we need to give the numbering at each carbon. This carbon is connected to hydrogen. This carbon is connected to carbon. Comparing with the atomic number of hydrogen carbon, atomic number is higher. That's why this is the first number. This one is the what? Second number. In this case, this is first number and this one is second number. So one, two, and one, two. It means both number one and are opposite in nature. Both two numbers are. opposite in nature that's why this is commonly called as what e isomer if i want to say z isomer cooh h cooh h 1 2 1 to if you see this example what we are observing one is on the same second is on the same that's why this is what z isomer similarly whatever the enolate ion we are getting here this can be either e enolate or this can be either z enolate if you see in this case this is one this is two this is one this is two it means that what this is Z enolate. There is a possibility for the e e enolate also. How can we write that? O minus H R. This is one, two. This is one and two. This is e enolate. The formation of syn and anti-isomer are erythro or thio isomer, depending upon the formation of Z or E isomers. During the progress of the particular reaction, if the Z enolate is formed, your product will be syn. During the reaction, if E enolate is formed. Then your production will be the product will be anti. Here we have two concepts: kinetically controlled reactions and thermodynamically controlled reactions. Kinetically controlled, thermodynamically controlled. Kinetically controlled reactions are related to what? rate of reactions thermodynamically controlled reactions are related to what formation of stable compound if you are looking for a stable compound the reaction should be thermodynamically controlled if you want to complete the reaction in a fraction of time it means that rate that is commonly called as kinetically controlled reactions here we need to remember a point that 
जेड इनोलेट ई इनोलेट जेड इनोलेट गिवस सिन मेजर प्रोडक्ट ई इनोलेट गिवस एंटी मेजर प्रोडक्ट This is the situation in case of thermodynamically controlled reactions. This is the situation in case of kinetically controlled reactions. You all need to remember the formation of enolate. The deciding factors are the formation of enolate ions only. Just you need to remember this one. Based on that, you can easily identify which type of product is the major one in this particular reaction. So, this is all about your aldol condensation.